You're about to meet a woman whose genetic condition gives her a dramatically different appearance. But the face that spurred bullying as a child has led to a high fashion career as an adult. I started modeling about three years ago. A photographer whose work I really enjoyed asked me to model for him. And from there, my modeling and acting work kind of started simultaneously. There's only one me in the world, and the only one that looks like me, and I knew I could make a business off of it. My modeling work is, I think, more well-known in Europe. Only recently has America come to really get to know me, and I guess accept me with open arms. I definitely had some ups and downs. I was stared at a lot. A lot of people, they treated me as though I had a mental disability. It's a lot of ignorance, and I can't see that that's not the way that I am. When I was born, I was at the doctor's about three to five times a week, and I had about 30 to 40 different surgeries. Around 12 to 13, I made a choice. I didn't want to live my life how other people thought I should live my life. I wanted to be free. I was born with a genetic disorder called ectodermal dysplasia, and it affects the dermal layer of skin. Therefore, it affects the hair, teeth, nails, pores, glands, and any soft tissue. I was also born with a bilateral cleft lip and palate. It's a difficult question for me when I'm asked would I ever change my appearance. Ideally, in my own perfect world, I would not change the way I look at all. At the end of the day, I think part of what makes me most successful is that I'm not afraid to be who I am and I'm not afraid to look a certain way. I just try to stay true to who I really am. Please give a warm welcome to Melanie. Thank you. Well, one of, one of the things that's just so compelling about you is, you know, we just in the first segment, we're talking about young women struggling with body image and trying to fit a perfect mold. And here you are basically embracing life and saying that I am perfectly comfortable with who I am. Yes. Uh, it's crazy how many people are not comfortable with who they are. To me, I, I just think this is the only body that we have. This is what we're given. I think everybody should really try to make the best with what they have. And this is the way that we're born. This is our body. I think we should own it and enjoy it as much as we can. How would you go with, you know, with your ectodermal dysplasia, difficulty sweating, some of the basic things that happen with, you know, with skin. How have you dealt with that? It really affects all of my senses. So really the way that I function, uh, it affects glands, all the glands in your body. So I can't sweat. And there are glands in your lips, well, in your mouth and in your eyes. So I have difficulty salivating as much as I guess an average person would. Mm -hmm. And my eyes, they get irritated very easily. Mm -hmm. And with your glands, my glands not really lubricating my eye how it should, uh, it actually created more irritation. So it, it has caused me to become legally blind. And what's, what's amazing to me to brag on you more is that you know you're you're dealing with these health setbacks in such a positive way and mm. i want to emphasize melanie doesn't want to change her appearance at all but she did mention some of her daily struggles and also issues with things like chewing so we actually sent her to the cosmetic dentist dr bill dorfman for a consult if you could wave a magic wand and have exactly what you want in your mouth what would you ask for? I have no idea what it would be like to have teeth. You and think you'd want some? 
I would. My palette is closed. I do have a fistula. An, uh, it's a called a fistula. fistula. And there's a possibility that we can surgically close that fistula. Would that change my appearance? Not at all. What really? it would do, it would make it really nice when you drank things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do an exam for you. So what I wanted to show you is, can you see there's a little hole back there? So that's the fistula, that's the hole that we want to close right there. Take a look in the mirror up here. Can you see? You've got one tooth over here. Uh-huh. You've got another tooth over here, and these are temporary crowns. That's uh -huh. why they're silver like that. And we don't have a lot of bone on the lower here, and you have really no bone on the upper. Yeah. Now I want to sit you up and show you your x-ray over here, okay. okay? The problem with this lower tooth is that this is all decay in here. Yeah. So unfortunately, that guy has to come out. So I want to take a few more pictures, then we're done, okay? okay? Smile real wide for me. But not like this, <laughs> but yeah, like that, okay? Smile. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're going to take some models, and then I'm gonna go back with my whole team, and I'm going to figure out what we could do to try and help you out with that wish list. You would like that? Yeah, thank you. Would I get a hug? <laughs> I want to welcome to the show dentist Dr. Bill Dorfman. And, and Dr. Dorfman, what did you find? Well, because of the nasal oral fistula, she has a large hole in her palate. And so, Melanie, when you're eating, you're getting food and water and all that up in your sinus. It also affects your speech. So there's two ways that we could possibly close that. The easy way is we can make a denture, and the denture would fit on your palate. When the denture's up there, obviously, it would block the hole. But a better way would be to do it surgically. And if we close that up surgically, whether you had the denture in or didn't, you'd never have that hole, you'd never have food and water going up there. The problem is, if we do that surgically, we can't even begin to make teeth for about two months because that tissue has to rest and heal. We can't put any pressure on it. But I think if we did that, it would really help you a lot with your speech and with eating and everything else in your life. Yes. So since Melanie has never had teeth and never had to deal with that, is it going to be a relearning process when she has them? Are we going to need some speech therapy or, or um, to, try, to try and train? Because I can imagine that teeth would get in the way after all this yes. time, right? Yes. A absolutely. I mean, we talked about the possibility of having teeth, and Melanie said, you know, I'm really happy with the two teeth I have sure. because I can chew with those. And I said, well, but we're going to lose that lower tooth, so you're not going to have two teeth anymore. And then she said, well, but I feel like if I have a whole mouth of teeth, I'll feel like a shark. There'll be too many. I'm like, I don't think that'll be a problem because we all have that. We're pretty good. But is this something that, Melanie, if, if you're going through that whole evaluation, I'm assuming the, the idea of, of not having food and liquids go up into your sinuses, that that is an appealing proposition for you? Yeah. yeah. Definitely something I would consider. Oh, all right. Nice. Well, you've got... Three surprises. Number one, Dr. Kupferman said he can close your palate, and at the same time, number two, he can put some implants in the lower so that when I make you some teeth, which you can wear or not wear, I'll make yeah. them removable so you have the option. If you want to wear them, you wear them. If you don't want to wear them, you don't have to. But I think it will help with the function of chewing, with talking, with everything else. And the best part about all this it's all free. Thank you for that.